Go on, you can give God a hand praise, right? You can give God a hand praise. You know, people often say to me, why do we clap so much in church? Are you, are you, are you applauding the, the singers? No, we're giving God a hand praise because God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. God is good. I'm going to read a piece of Scripture uh, for you. It's from the book of Ecclesiastes, and it's going to be on the screen in just a moment after we've got through all these uh, title slides. With any luck, there we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season a time to every purpose under the heaven. That's our scripture reading for this evening. Can we say it together? Let's go back. One more slide. There we go. Let's say it together. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Let's pray together. God, we are grateful for this moment. We're grateful for this church. We're grateful for the people who are sat next to us. We're grateful, God, that you're a God of transformation. And we pray, God, that as we come into this house this night, as we have sung your praise, that you have opened us, cracked us open just enough that your Spirit might have its way among us. So be with us, God. Still us. Grant us peace. Help us to know that it is well with my soul. No matter where we are on life's journey, it is well because we are in the house of our God. And so now, God, as we have opened ourselves, help us to hear this good news, this message of hope for the nations, a hope for liberation, a hope for transformation, a hope that might keep us in this day. And through that message of hope, help us to therefore go back out into the world and live that hope embodied in each and every one of us, that we might be a symbol of hope to many. And now, God, I pray that you would touch these lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this night. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are, we're starting a brand new series of sermons uh, for the next few weeks, uh, 21 Days of Thanksgiving. This is the season of Thanksgiving, a season when we uh, pay our attention to the things that we are grateful for in our lives. And on Thanksgiving week and on Thanksgiving day, many of us will be sat around tables, some of which we will be grateful for and some for which we might not be as grateful as perhaps we could be, uh, depending on where we find ourselves at this Thanksgiving. But we are going to uh, prepare our hearts and minds for that Thanksgiving moment when we are able to share uh, a tradition that you have here in the United States, uh, sharing a tradition of saying and naming and claiming one thing that you are grateful for. And so we're preparing you because we're going to give you 21 things that you can be grateful for and hog the conversation at the table. Uh, 21 things that you can be grateful for, 21 things that we're inviting you to uh, post on Facebook and on social media uh, so that the folks around you might also think about what they are grateful for and how thankful they are for the little things and the big things in life. And so over these next 21 days, we want to encourage you to do that because we think, I think, we believe that when you come at life from a place of gratitude, when you come at life from a place of giving thanks, attitudes shift. When you come at life from a place of gratitude and thanksgiving, situations shift. When you come at life from a place of gratitude, everything in our body changes. It's a bit like prayer changes things. A sense of gratitude changes the way that we see things, changes the way that we live, changes the way that we view the world because we come at the world from a place of gratitude. Ever been around the Debbie Downers in your life? You know, those folks that always have something to complain about. No matter how many times you point out to them uh, the things that they should be grateful of or could be grateful for, there's always a twist that they find that they aren't grateful for. And I know that I've been around those people, and sometimes those people even rub off on us. And, and that we sometimes shift our attitude. And it's uh, surprising, or perhaps not so surprising, just how quickly our lives can be changed into the likeness of someone else when we lose our focus and we forget to stay in the moment, when we lose our focus and fail to stay present in who we are. And so this evening we're thinking about how we can stay in the moment. How can we stay present with who we are in a world where we're constantly having to think about what's coming up tomorrow? You know, I, I, I have a busy schedule. There's no doubt that I have a busy schedule. Scott Stout, my personal assistant, uh, doesn't know what it means to have a break between meetings. Um, and I love him for it because he knows that I like to keep busy. 
Uh, but uh, but t- I tell you, sometimes I look at my schedule in the morning, I think, oh, how Mary, full of grace, how on earth am I going to get through? And sometimes, I have to be honest, Scott, I am thinking about my last appointment, hoping that that's coming first. Uh, because sometimes it just seems like there is back-to-back one thing after the another. And today was a bit like that, not because of Scott. Um, Scott's going to kill me after this, but uh, not because of Scott, uh, but because of some of the other things that I had to do for myself personally. Uh, Sometimes I have to do things for myself, it's surprisingly, um, but uh, sometimes I do, and so I found myself having to reorganize my schedule um, in order to accomplish everything that Scott already had on my schedule for today. And so I found myself running around from one thing to the next. Uh, I I just been thinking about some of the things I got to do today. I was able, uh, I'm on the uh, the council, the the pastoral council for Children's Hospital. Um, And today they had a a, a time for the staff and for the uh, doctors and nurses to come together and to remember uh, all of the kids that had died in children's over this last year. Uh, 165 names were read. Um, of kids that had died in a children's hospital this year, um, and uh, those were inpatient. Another 60 that died uh, in their home that had been patients, and four of the staff had died this year. And so every year they take an opportunity to call out their names because calling out their names bring them back into the moment. They bring them back into our presence. We just did that this past Sunday as we remembered those in our own congregation that we had lost. They bring them back into the moment and we remember just how grateful we are for their lives. And I, I'll be honest with you, just remembering the, the names of kids, especially those in children's hospitals, that is a painful experience for many. Uh, but it's also cathartic and also very healing. Uh, to bring them back and to welcome them back as the, the saints of who we are. But I, I was able to do that, and, and I, I left there and immediately came back to the church uh, for our own Hope Day School, uh, which is kids between the ages of six weeks and five years, and we have about 90 kids in our day school. Um, and uh, those kids um, did Pastor's Appreciation Day today. And so uh, we were ushered into the, the main auditorium, the, uh, the four pastors who were here today. We were ushered in, and the kids were all hiding, and they uh, all kind of, kind of went, surprise! And they surprised us with a couple of songs, and then we were sent off to different rooms for our own little pastor's appreciation, and uh, they baked cookies for us and uh, made little gifts and cards uh, for all the pastoral staff as a way of saying thank you uh, for their work. And I ha- had to kind of bring myself out of that one moment uh, of being at Children's Hospital and remembering all those names and then coming uh, back to church to greet these 90 kids um, who are just excited uh, to be present and to be alive. And you know, we sometimes have to move from moment to moment, to moment to moment. And I could have, I could have remained in that moment uh, over at Children's and perhaps missed out on this extraordinary moment of these kids in our own church who were just grateful for the attention that they get from the clergy uh, within this congregation. And that doesn't mean later on I'll reflect over everything that happened this week. Um, and then I had to leave here and go straight back to, onto another appointment. And on the way to another appointment, I had to do an interview uh, on the phone in the car. I just love doing this um, with uh, uh, another organization out of town um, who are a part of a Freedom for All Americans. Um, and they are working on the Equality Act that's going through the Senate right now. And um, that I've, I, this lovely woman who was interviewing me, and uh, uh, she, she obviously didn't know uh, who I was or who Cathedral of Hope was, um, because she was asking some interesting questions, and I was like, I'm surprised you're asking these questions. And so eventually I said, you know, do you know Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ? She said, no, I, I haven't had time to do any research. I said, oh, wait, let me just tell you <laughs> who we are. Um, and it was an exciting opportunity to be able to witness to her, and she was like, oh, I'd never, I never knew that's who you were. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to make her feel like a fool or anything like that, but she was just so excited uh, that she had encountered Cathedral of Hope and the ways in which we're working as advocates and uh, for the Equality Act and making sure that all people, all Americans, are a part of what we call the United States of America. And that when we say all, or rather as we say in Texas, when we mean y'all, uh, or y'all, y'all, because you say it twice, uh, we really do mean, we really do mean y'all. So uh, that was an exciting, exciting conversation. And then I left that appointment, had to run back to the church for a six o'clock appointment uh, with uh, one of our congregants who uh, wanted to share with me, she's a wonderful, wonderful, uh, wonderful woman uh, who attends our nine o'clock service, and she wanted to share with me what's going on in her life right now. 
And she was sharing in her life that uh, she's taking care of her mom, who's 84 years of age, and um, she needs 24-7 care, and so she has to work her calendar so that she's always present uh, with her mom. And, and she said, you know, I, I get to church at 9 o'clock. Sometimes I have to come at 11 o'clock because I have to rearrange my life so that um, mom gets sat with. And she said, you know, I hear you every Sunday say that your know, discipleship path is about uh, you know, committing and claiming and, 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 and celebrating. And she said, you know, I, I feel sometimes like I really want to do so much more. And I had to remind her that she was fulfilling her discipleship path by ministering to her mom right at this very moment. And that that is no less ministry than anything else that we get to do. And she had never thought of her life that way. And so I said, I want you to know that you're already fulfilling the, the four C's of your discipleship path. And, you know, whatever happens to mom eventually, you'll, be, you'll change that and to do other things. But right now, you're, you're, doing, you're doing what you need to do and you need to stay in the moment. How many of us stay in the moment? How many of us really stay in the moment? How many of us really understand that when the book of Ecclesiastes says there is a, a season for all things under the sun? That what, what, perhaps what God is inviting us to do is to actually live in that season. Not to keep thinking about what the next season's going to be, but to actually stay in the season that sometimes we just need to go through some stuff. And sometimes that's good stuff. Don't get, don't get me wrong. When we say stuff, sometimes we think of that in bad ways. But sometimes we have to go through some of the stuff, some of the good stuff, in order to appreciate or to learn or to experience something new in our lives. And if we don't remain in the moment, sometimes we miss it. We, we miss it. We miss those moments in our lives where we know that there is a season, there is a reason for being where we are right at this very moment. You know, some people have often asked me um, if I'm in recovery. Uh, and they ask me that because I talk about recovery a lot. Um, and uh, I, want, I want to tell you, I'm not in recovery. Well, actually, I think all of us are in recovery from something. Uh, it may not be one of the big things that we talk about, but uh, I think all of us are in recovery. I know a number of us are in this congregation are recovering Baptists. <laughs> Some of us are recovering Southern Baptists. Uh, and there's others who are recovering uh, Catholics. Oh, not so many tonight. <laughs> but, you know, we're all in recovery from something. And um, when I was, when I was a, a, younger, a younger minister uh, back in the UK, I was a chaplain to five drug and alcohol rehab houses. Um, and so the 12 steps are, I, I know them backwards and forwards. Um, I don't always remember them, and I don't always remember the traditions out of them, but uh, they soon come back when I hear them. Um, and I've done more step five work than I ever care to imagine. I know many of you have heard that. Um, and I could tell you some of the things I've heard in step five. Uh, but I tell you, they're, they're going to be a book that I can retire on. Um, <laughs> because step five, you're not allowed to repeat them. But uh, it, it really is. It's going to be my retirement book. Um, and and I, can't, I can't wait to tell some of the stories that I've heard in recovery in step five. Um, but one of the things I really, really honestly value about the 12-step is that it's not a secular program. People always think that the 12 Steps is a secular program. The 12 Steps is a spiritual program. It was founded uh, by a, 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 an Anglican priest um, in, I believe, in the UK. Um, you see, not everything good comes out of the UK. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, oh, you didn't like that, did you? <laughs> oh... Some good things come out of the, out of the UK. Uh, but the 12-step tradition was founded by, by a priest who uh, took the scriptures and put them into language that perhaps other people could, could understand. And uh, one, of the, one of the 12 steps is, is about, is a, a, one of the things about recovery is to remember to stay in the moment. Um, and that so many of us have fallen off the wagon or have fallen out of recovery because we fail to stay in the moment. We fail to stay present. We start thinking, we start thinking about what, what yesterday was like or perhaps what tomorrow could be like or, or start allowing our head to play tricks on us uh, about where we're at in our lives um, and that we allow that guilt and that shame and all of those things that, that caused us to be in addiction or, or, or to, be, uh, to, to need recovery in the first place to take over. And some of the folks who have been in 12 Steps for, for, for a long time know that the secret to success is to stay in the day, to stay in the moment, to stay in the season. And uh, during the meet and greet, I saw one of our folks and I said, so how many days have you got now? And he said, seven years. 
And uh, I, I want to tell you, I'm going to just congratulate him because seven years is a great achievement. <laughs> but those seven years are made up of one day at a time. Do I get an amen? Those seven years are made up of one day at a time. And I, I really believe that that is a lesson that we can learn wherever we are on our life's journey, uh, that we can learn a lesson by living one day at a time. Some of us would say we have to live one minute at a time. Um, but, you know, we, we have to live in whatever, whatever chunks that, we're, that are manageable for us and to stay in the moment because we miss out on life and we miss out on all that life has to offer us when we start to think about or we start to procrastinate or we start to live in the future. You know, how many of us, you know, we're here on Wednesday are thinking, oh, uh, good grief, it's, it's, almost, it's almost the weekend. Um, or how many of us are thinking about, well, I'll, I'll start that diet after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I see ya, I see ya. Or, or I'll, 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 I'll perhaps uh, think about where my relationship is uh, after, after the holidays because this is not the right time to be thinking about. All of those things that we start to do to put off the moment, to put off making decisions in our lives that cause us to remain in the moment. And I think that the relationship we're called to have with Jesus is a relationship that's in the moment. You know, how many of us come into worship with a preconceived idea about what worship is going to be like tonight? You know, we have this formula or this order or this kind of think or we think we know what's going to happen. And sometimes that's exactly what's going to happen because we've already predestined that's what's going to happen. Rather than staying in the moment and just knowing that God is going to show up in every single moment if we would open ourselves to the different experience that we could have if it was fresh and new. It was new every morning. Every morning, life can be new if we would stay in the moment. We can't change what happened yesterday. We all look back and we get all these regrets and we beat ourselves up over and over and over again. And when we do that, it determines what tomorrow is going to be like. But if we could just wake up every morning or every moment, every decision, every appointment, just to remain in the moment and see the unexpected that might happen if we would not predetermine what it's going to look like or what this season is going to teach us or what this season is going to tell us about a certain situation. God, God, in, God doesn't treat us like that. God, God lives with us moment by moment. You know, I believe in free will. I believe that we have the free will to determine wh what we're going to do. We have a set of guidelines that perhaps we are a framework that we live by. Um, and, but God, God shows up in every moment that we invite God into. And the truth of the matter is that if that is, if that is the reality for us, if that's our experience, then perhaps what we could do and what we could honor God with is by staying in our moments and staying more firmly in those moments so that every day, every moment, every encounter could be a different experience. Because the truth is that so often when we're encountering one another, we're often looking past. Or we're thinking about what's next. Or we're making, how many of us when we're having a conversation with someone, we're formulating what we're going to respond with rather than actually hearing what the person might be saying to us. But if we could stay focused, if we could stay in the moment, how much more exciting might life be? For, there is a, for every season, every season, the prophet tells us, the Spirit can be present. Every encounter, every single day, every single second, every single minute. And if we could remain focused, if we could remain in those moments, perhaps the Spirit might surprise us. Perhaps the Holy Spirit might encounter us differently. Perhaps the Holy Spirit might even have some room within our lives to use us for ministry, to use us to bring something to someone else that might just be a transforming moment for them. I know sometimes when I've had discussions or conversations with the most unexpected people, God sometimes shows up and says something that I needed to hear, but I wasn't expecting to hear it from that person, but I needed to be right at that moment with that person in order for God to get my attention. Do I get a witness? 
And that's when we stay in the moment. That's the, that's the sense of being present. That's the sense of being thankful. And perhaps when we're in those moments, that's a moment of gratitude. That's a moment of thanksgiving. That's a moment to give God thanks for just showing up in that moment, in that situation, in that crisis, in that celebration in all of those things, looking out for God in the moments. But we can't look for God in the moments if we're thinking about tomorrow or if we're thinking about going down the road or if we're thinking about I'm not going to make it in recovery. If we think those ways, then perhaps that's exactly what will happen. But if we could stay in the moment, if we could stay in the day, the seven years, one day at a time, one moment at a time, one encounter at a time, one meeting at a time. If we could stay in those moments, perhaps God might be able to do a new thing with us. We're not conditioned to do that in our culture. We're running, running, running. We're looking at schedules. Absolutely, Scott. Looking at schedules. I'm already, I'm already ready. I go, when I go home tonight, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what my first meeting is tomorrow morning. I just know that about me. And perhaps, you know, that's my responsibility to know what my first meeting is at tomorrow morning. But sometimes we just have to let those things be. Because God, God will do a new thing. God will do something new with us if we expect the unexpected. And if we expect that God has something for us tonight. So I, so I hope that as we've shared in our worship this evening, as you've heard this message this evening, I hope that it's touched you in some way that might cause you just to do something different, just to experiment with it, to try it out, to try. I love when people talk to me about trying things on. What would it be like if we would just try this on and perhaps there might come a blessing out of it. There might come a, 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 a 21 days of thanksgiving out of it. Something might happen if we might just stay in the moment. So I'm going to invite you to think about that and to uh, pl perhaps apply it to your own life. Uh, perhaps you can just do it for a few days and if it works, then keep doing it for another few days. Or if it just works for the tomorrow, then try it on for, for Friday and try it on for Saturday. But, but don't think that far ahead. Perhaps just stay one day at a time. You know, that wonderful, is it Tammy Wennett that sang one day at a time, sweet Jesus? That's all I'm asking from you. I'm not going to sing it. But perhaps you can play that in your head. Perhaps I put that in your head for tonight. Perhaps you can just play that in your head. And perhaps tomorrow morning you can sing it to yourself one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. And perhaps next week when we gather, you might have some testimony or something that you learnt that you're taking with you as a new habit, as a new encounter, as a new experience. As the worship singer, song, uh, Voices of Hope come back up for this evening, I want to share this before worship, we were praying. And, uh, you know, when we, we do worship, you know, every Sunday, every Wednesday, and I said to the worship leaders, I said, you know, tonight, perhaps even for me, perhaps as we go out to lead worship this evening, uh, perhaps we could be prepared for something new. Perhaps we're not thinking about, well, this is the formula of worship. We do three songs and we pray and then we hear the word. Uh, perhaps tonight we could go out with a different experience. And I want to tell you, these folks, every Wednesday, never fail to surprise me um, or to bless me. And uh, I believe that over these last few weeks, um, God's been doing a new thing with this group. And they've been leading us with a new enthusiasm and a new spirit that has um, encountered us differently. And uh, we've, we've seen here in this place over the last few weeks, we've seen some folks who have been healed. Uh, we've seen some folks here who have given up some things in order to take on new things. Uh, we've seen some folks who have found their faith one more time and have given the glory to God and I believe that these folks help us. They help us to see God differently. And they help us to encounter God differently. And for those of you who are perhaps new with us this evening, I pray that what you've received here this evening is that you have seen in us, in you, the potential of all that you can be. And that no one 
No one. Paul would say it this way, there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And I pray that what you've heard and seen this evening, every single one of us and those who are with us for the first time, is that what you perhaps have heard and seen is that there is a new thing that you can try on tonight that might just reassure you and help you and I to know that God is still present, that God is still speaking, God is still working. But in order for that to happen, we sometimes need to stay in the moment and get out of the way. I love that. We have to sometimes just get out of the way and let God do that new thing. But to get out of the way means that we have to let go of some things and to try some things on new for ourselves. So I'm going to be quiet because I'm a preacher and I've got a microphone and I could preach until kingdom come. Um, but I know we've got a schedule to keep. So I'm going to uh, stay in this moment and uh, I'm going to just give God the glory. Let's give God the glory this evening.